with my life is a miracle. Every child has a story of, of God's love to share. Shalom world, tune into God's love story. God wants to be in your life. He made us for communion with each other and fundamentally with himself. Fruitfulness of having God in your life. The fruit of peace, love, joy, gentleness, kindness. We must find God in our own souls, in our own hearts. Hello, my name is Father John Harris, I'm an Irish Dominican, and I'd like to welcome you to this series of talks on the fruitfulness that God brings to every human being in their life. One of the most beautiful things we can do as human beings is be kind to each other. And one of the worst things we can do as human beings to each other is to be cruel. When God is in your life, one of the great fruits is always going to be your ability to be kind. I'd like to begin this reflection by reading a passage from the Bible according to St. John, the Gospel of Jesus. And it speaks of Jesus on the Temple Mount. Early in the morning, Jesus came again to the temple. All the people came to him and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and placing her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now in the law of Moses, he commanded us to stone such a woman. What do you say about her? This they said to test him, that they might bring some charge against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. And as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. And at once more he bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the eldest. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus looked up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. In the long history of the church, there has been much discussion as to why did Jesus bend down and why did he write on the ground? Of course, we don't know. But I personally would like to think that when the Pharisees brought the woman to Jesus, they threw her on the ground. So in actual fact, what Jesus was doing was bending down to look into her eyes and there to reassure her by the gaze of his eyes that he wasn't against her. And that act of bending down so that he could look into her eyes, reassure her that not everybody was against her, that he was for her, that to me is the supreme act of kindness. It is what Jesus does, isn't it? We Christians believe that God became man in Jesus. God bent down so that he could look into our eyes and just be kind and let the be healing begin. I spoke already in this series of how we human beings cannot be fixed, but we can be healed. And that is the great work of kindness, to heal, to bring new life, to bring peace. A few years ago, when I was working in Dublin, I was working with a group of Christians who were there to help prostitutes working on the street. One day I was speaking to one of the girls and she told me a story that has always stood with me. One night, she said, after a very difficult night, she hadn't made enough money to bring back to her pimp. And she was totally disillusioned 
frightened, cold, and she just threw herself in a doorway just to wait for the dawn. She was awoken by the sound of somebody close to her. She immediately became frightened because she presumed that this person was going to do her some damage. And she looked up and there was a milkman looking at her. Now you may not know what a milkman is, but this is a man who goes from house to house delivering milk early in the morning. And he looked down and he smiled at her. And he said, are you okay? She said to me, you know, Father, this was the first man who had ever been kind to me for years. Up until that moment, my overall experience of men had been those who used me and abused me. But this man just looked into my eyes and asked me, was I okay? He then offered me a cigarette. Only as I smoked the cigarette did I begin to feel maybe I am secure. This man isn't going to do anything to harm me. He never asked her what she was doing there. He knew exactly what she had been doing. And he asked her again, are you okay? And he said, can you get home? And she says, I have no money. And he put his hand into his pocket and he took out 20 pounds. And he gave her the 20 pounds and said, now, get a taxi and go home. And as I got up to leave, she said, he put his hand into his pocket and gave me the rest of the cigarettes, a 20 pack, and said, now, you'll need these. That man doesn't know who she was, probably thinks that she forgot all he did for her. And yet she said to me that the kindness of that man reassured me of humanity, reassured me what it was to be a human being, reassured me that I was okay, and it was okay for me to be a human being. Very interesting that she said, he gave me back my life, an act of kindness. When our blessed Lord leaned down to look into that woman's eyes, an act of kindness, to be kind to each other really it doesn't cost us anything, but it, it makes a terrible difference to the person to whom you are kind. We can, at this moment in time, live in a very cruel world when people are constantly trying to get ahead of people, put people down, but that's not human. What is truly human is our ability to be kind to each other, to look, in, look into other people's eyes and to smile, to say good morning to say thank you, to say please. These little acts of kindness make the world a more human place. And when we have God in our life, when we know that we are loved, when we know we are at peace, when we have that security of being at peace and loved by God, it really teaches us that kindness is the way we must be to each other. There's two people mentioned on the way of the cross. One is Veronica. And the story is that as Jesus walked along the way, this woman stood out against the crowd and she offered him a cloth to wipe his face. An act of kindness. Now, the act of kindness was also a very courageous act because everybody around her was screaming for his death. Everybody around him was screaming at him. The soldiers were beating at him. The crowd were spitting at him. But this woman, moved by kindness, offered him a towel. She didn't stop the execution. She didn't change history. Some people might say she was foolish. She put herself in danger. But she offered him that cloth, that act of kindness. Possibly the only act of kindness done to Jesus on his way to Calvary. And we Christians remember it to this day. You do not forget kindness in your life. There was another man who helped Jesus on his way to Calvary. This man was called Simon of Cyrene. Simon of Cyrene was coming in from the fields, we are told, to go back into Jerusalem. 
and the soldiers forced him to carry the cross of Jesus. He didn't want to do it. He wasn't, it wasn't in that sense an act of kindness that he himself initiated. But maybe indeed out of fear, he carried the cross with Jesus. How often do you and I have the opportunity to carry the cross with Jesus by being kind to other people? This is the fruit of our Christianity. This is the fruit of having Jesus in your life. You learn how to be kind. And that's why I said at the very beginning of this series, having God in your life helps you to become more human, not less. God takes nothing from us of our freedom and of our joy. He actually adds to it, encourages it, and helps us to become more the people we want to be and more the people we can be. What the world needs today is kindness. Very often, you know, like Veronica, we can't change the world. We can't save people. But all of us can be kind. I want for you now to think for a moment of someone who's been kind to you. Someone who didn't ask anything. Someone who didn't dem demand anything but someone who was just kind, who looked into your eyes and you knew there was someone cared, someone who helped you on your journey. Pray for them. Thank God for them. And also rejoice for moments in your life when you were kind to people, when you were given the opportunity to look into their eyes and just smile at them. Not to change the world, not to make the world a different place in that sense, but just to be with them in an act of kindness. With God in your life, God who is the most kind person that we can ever know, the Lord Jesus, who stoops down to wherever you are and looks into the eyes of your soul of your heart and looks there because he loves you and wants you to know that he loves you. Allow the Lord to be kind and learn from him in his kindness to you. So let us pray. Lord, I thank you for the people in my life who have been kind for the people who have smiled at me on the days I needed a smile, for the people who have said hello to me when I felt totally alone, for the cup of water given to me, Lord, bless them. And Lord, thank you for the opportunities you've given in my life for me to be kind to others, to be the best human being that I can be by looking at somebody not in derision, not in anger, but just kindly, because they're there, a fellow human being, equal to me in all ways because of our humanity and because we are truly brothers and sisters in Christ, truly children of God. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the opportunity to bring kindness into the world. The kindness I bring into the world is the fruit of the kindness that Jesus brings into my world through his care and his kind action to me. As he looks into my heart with his love, his peace, his joy. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. At the end of Mass, we are told to go out and bring the Gospel into our lives and witness to the Gospel by everything that we say and do. It's so important that we are all out there bringing the joy of the Gospel to everyone we know. And that's why I'm so pleased to endorse and offer my blessing to Shalom World TV for all that you are doing to bring good news into this world which is often sad and dark 
and in need of a message of hope. Thank you for what you're doing. May God bless your work always.